That's a big fish too. Got him. Welcome all back everybody. We are at uh, a giant lake. Going to do some bass fishing and some crappie fishing in a couple videos out here. Uh, doing a little pre-fishing for a derb. Today's video is sponsored by our friends at Mystery Tackle Box. Fishing Freaks, the Mystery Tackle Box is the ultimate fishing tackle subscription service. Mystery Tackle Box has been working for years now with some of the biggest names in the fishing industry and in getting all of their baits into these boxes and to your doorstep. It's as easy as pumpkin pie. All you gotta do is log on to mysterytacklebox.com, decide which box is right for you. You can get anything from the generic, just starter box, all the way up to an elite box. I'm talking JDM products, high-end plastics and hard baits. One of my favorite things about Mystery Tackle Box is I get things that I haven't seen yet. So I get to explore new baits, discover new techniques, and things that might help me along in my fishing journey. They also provide fishing knowledge and information, including in the box and on their website, to help you along with your dangle journey. The Mystery Tiger Box is an amazing gift for all fishermen of every experience level. So if you've got a buddy, if you got a friend, if you got a loved one, pick them up a Mystery Tiger Box subscription. They'll love you forever. Give Mystery Tackle Box a dangle, y'all. The link is down in the description, and you can use my code for a discount off your first box. Thank you, MTB, for sponsoring today's video. And now let's go rip some lips. Uh, in the boat behind me right here, we've got Mr. Trey and an old buddy of mine, Brandon. I call him B-Dick, B-Dick and Stick. In our last Derby series, him and his partner, they actually finished second. So really cool to see that. My uh, my partner's currently coming down the hill here. Uh, Trey's my, my tournament partner, but Matt is my, my fishing partner for the weekend. Looks like a solid good time heading my way. We're gonna go to do some, uh, what is fall fishing that feels like summer. So uh, we've already got a report that the fishing's terrible. First guy I ran into said, leave the poles at home, you need a stick of dynamite. And we're gonna put a smile on our face, have a good time, and right hopefully learn some guy. things while we're out here. So. Uh, let's get after it on um, Big big Sam, as they call it. One of the biggest lakes in the country. Big boys. Got, got marks. Got marks. Perfect. 15 to 20. That one was in like brush piles on the points. That one was deep though. Yeah, you need to go back there. Yeah, that one that one had shadows. That one was deep deep. It had the shadows on it. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's like a saltwater bait, I think. Tuna popper or something. I'm gonna get out here on this point. Spoon one up, dude. All right, so we just rolled up on a spot, marked a few brush piles, and uh, saw one bust the top. So we got a little, got a little activity going. Just feel like this lake's probably gonna fish like September because it's. 95 degrees right now and it has been in the 70s all all nice and comfy now we're just not in that zone so i think these fish are having a hard time figuring out what season it is i'm gonna throw these big shad type things at them and then i'm gonna get a worm going but coming up a little afternoon feed Oh, the, oh yeah, they're doing that weird shad chasing on the points. This is I've done this before, man. You get lost. Chasing them. You get lost chasing. Oh, Fall bass fishing on points. It's uh, it's real common, real common thing. Spotted bass? No, it's not. Brush pile? No, it, it, it hit it. it, it, I, it. I saw it. It's not slacking the line, I mean, there. Keep in mind, we were just told at the boat ramp. 
dynamite is necessary to catch these fish right now. So if we catch one, I'm gonna be excited. We catch like one four pounder. So, so it was just a random dude that told you that? He just he was coming off the water. He's like, you don't need them poles, man. You need a stick of dynamite. I was like, oh, that's always good to hear. I love to hear that, man. What he didn't know is legally, like my fishing hands are basically dynamite. I've registered them as explosive fish catching devices with the state of Texas. So anytime I go out, I'm I'm on the line of getting a ticket. There he is, flush pile, freaking A. They're on the point feeding right now. They're out of the brush piles. We pushed up on this point. We were in like 15 to 20, came up five to eight. We saw them coming up here and sure enough, they be chomping. Problem is they're just moving around a giant point. Got a top water on, just walking and uh got bit twice they didn't connect matt had one hooked on a jerk bait pulled off these are good ones these are like three or four pounders you know we're not even in the magic zone yet i'm sure he left his friend there was one right there just a couple boils look at him smack in the shed That's a big fish too. Got him. Hooked yeah. up. He smacked it. It's a big one, dude. Oh my gosh, that's like a five pound? Dude, I'm telling you, they're like three, four pounders that were schooling out here. I can tell by the wake on that one. It's a good one. a good fish nice you know our buddies have been out here struggling today. <laughs> <laughs> oh this is too good okay we're gonna put that back in because there's tournament guys watching it's a nice four and a half pounder guys <sighs> got them on a vibe jig with a little swimmer oh gosh got hammered Woo. he tickled me i could see a glide bait doing all right yeah just something big that a big one can kind of zone in on hooked up spotted bass Found the spots. Mix of spots. That, that might have been what just hit me. Spotted bass on the line. Okay. All right. Here you go. Two fish within 30 minutes for uh, about five pounds. We just sent a photo to our, our buddy Trey, my tournament partner for this next tournament. I caught a bigger fish than they've caught all practice for this tournament. They're fishing right now for tomorrow and I caught it on his rod. So, sorry Trey. Oh, here's another one. Oh my gosh, dude. Dude, right next to the boat. It's like every time a boat comes over here, they get excited. Problem is I can't, I have to be secretive about these fish I catch when the skeeter swarms start buzzing around. Can't really, can't really be hooping and hollering over five pounders like I want to. Like you're just gonna be chasing them in the middle of the day though. There's one. He is not big. This is probably a spot. They come off. It's all right. I didn't want him to see him anyways. Megawatt of bait, 
some type of wood. Audio might have been a little dull right there. I apologize. I'm gonna turn this. We're gonna get this dialed. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So far, we've got some spotted bass and uh we've got that big large mouth and it it just came like randomly on a point where shad were pushed up that was the big key is like shad were pushed up in five to eight feet of water and there were fish uh fish busting on them um you know not being on the lake and we were here exactly a year ago and the grass is basically gone it's a lot has changed i'm just going off like typical fall stuff that I think is good. It's like follow the bait, look for long extended points, and then also look for, for fish to be hanging around creek channels. And then don't forget your like, you know, early morning, evening, top water bank fish. Throw your walking baits, throw your buzz baits, everything like that. Throw a, throw a frog, you got good shallow vegetation. We're just, we're just out of grass out here right now. It's a weird time for raver. So we've seen some big fish in brush piles. I haven't been able to get them to bite. Someone in our tournament a month from now will definitely be weighing in a bag over 30 pounds. Probably, I would not be surprised if a 35 pound bag was weighed in. So I've never caught them out here like that, but it definitely exists, y'all. Mega boys, bacons. juicy they're pumpkins big October pumpkins down there they're, uh, they're flushing out Can you show me that again sorry dude there we go there's a there's a hog hammer caught on a sea rig ET special I just got hit on my spoon here and there's you know we saw a bald eagle on this point we're like just gotta fish this thing this feels right MK. Oh, got him. Oh, we Good on him, boy. Good one? Giant. Daggum giant, boy. <laughs> Shoot, dude. Well, we found the spots, huh? Well, we found them. Woo! They out there deep. I believe in a 13 right here. 30 foot deep on the biggest point on the lake. Come on now. You know how you're going to catch one, right? Can I get a. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah. There it is. Straight shot, strikes again. Oh. Oh God, I just got bing bonged. Come on, hit it again now. I just, I got just got to believe in a giant, big giant roaming the deeps. I'm 30 foot on one of the biggest lakes in the United States with giants in it. And there's some fish on it. I'm gonna keep fishing until that, that tin latch is on. Come on, big girl. Oh, I know the trench hawk. That's, that was a good move, going with the double clacking half ounces. When you told me it was 30 feet, I was like, well, there's only one thing. You gotta go deep. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, we're in East Tech. I think I just had another tap of Rooski here. Might be getting them fired up. You're getting them fired up, but I'm gonna come through clean up. Doink, doink, doink. Spotted bass and largemouth, they will intermingle. Oh yeah. Like they don't keep separate even though they're like close to each other. Yeah, I think especially in the fall when they get, they both, well, spotted bass are always hard on shad, but largemouth get more on shad in the fall, so I think they'll intermingle more in, in the fall and winter. Uh, baby Mandito. Yeah, except I don't have anything to the bug is the drug. <laughs> I don't have a rock for the baby bandito right now. Sun going down. We're going to give it one last little dangle here. I honestly think 
you know, what we found when we first got out here, just bass eating shad. Probably the program. I, I've, I've personally been caught up in tournaments where that's a losing strategy yeah, because you catch a good fish like that and then you end up chasing them for hours and hours and hours. You're on the trolling motor chasing fish. Not any grass. Shallow. This is the time of year where grass should be prolific. It should be thick. It should be annoying in the very shallows and this lake doesn't have it. We had a bad freeze. I think it killed a lot of the grass out here. That's normally just a a haven for shad and bluegill so um, we're gonna end the day up shallow just just kind of eliminate some things check some boxes we're in a creek right now that is known for winning tournaments what type of vegetation? We've got some veg we're not seeing the busters like we did when we first rolled up so I think that was really happenstance that we came across but was probably pretty telling for like how how the lake is fishing right now tomorrow's a whole different day and we're gonna uh try morning patterns and everything like that but it's it's warming up and conditions are changing we've got a full moon i think the mornings are gonna be terrible i really do unfortunately but uh tomorrow just might be a junk fishing day and we're gonna dig into past patterns that have worked uh for the fall so anyways guys stay tuned Try to catch him here. We'll see in the morning. That is got, got him right away. Literally saw him on live scope. Whoa, that's a that's good, a good one. fish. Wow, good fish. I was thinking these were like one pounders. Oh, that's just a group of rogue. Bit. Oh my gosh, big group, dude. Good fish. I need to put this down. Good fish. Good fish. Good fish. Look at this. Oh my gosh, man. 